It's speaking of the last days. It's speaking in verse 3 of the apostasia in Greek, the falling away that will come with the manifestation of the Antichrist. But look what it says in verse 11. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence, so that they might believe what is false, in order that they all may be judged who did not believe in the truth, believed the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. The truth is the Word of God. Jesus is the truth and He's the Word, the Logos. If somebody doesn't love the truth of Scripture, they don't love Jesus Christ. They can say all they want, have all the hallelujahs they want. If they don't love the truth of the Word of God, they don't love the Word of God who is Jesus, the incarnate Logos. If you don't love the Bible, you don't love Jesus Christ as far as God's concerned. That's it. If you love me, keep my commandments. You don't love Him, you don't love his word and if people don't love the truth they don't love Jesus that's what it says he is the way the truth the life. don't love the truth they don't love Jesus and if they don't love him tell us why it's because in some way they are taking pleasure in wickedness when you find so called Christians who don't love the truth it's because they're taking pleasure in wickedness Therefore, the Lord will send upon them a deluding influence that they may believe what is false. How will the Antichrist con people? He's the ultimate judgment. God gives them over to it. If people can't see through an obvious false prophet and false teacher like Benny Hinn, if you can't see through Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland, what is going to happen when this stuff comes down? What will happen when... when, when Therefore, the Lord will send a deluding influence. In the book of Zechariah, typologically, the Antichrist is called the angel of God, uh, agent of God. It's a frightening prospect. It is a judgment. Several years ago, I was frantically trying to stop, in England where I live, the explosion of things like the laughing and drunken revival from Toronto and Pensacola. I was trying to stop it, but the Lord said, no, don't, you're not going to stop this. You can only warn the elect. You can rescue those who are honestly deceived, but you can't stop it. Why? What you see today with the money preachers, the faith prosperity heretics, what you see with Toronto, what you see with the ecumenical movement, these things are not simply deceptions of Satan. They are judgments from God on a backslidden church. It is God's judgment on Laodicea. The Lord will send a delusion that they may believe what is false. Remember, Laodicea is blind. Its first problem is it doesn't know what Laodicea. The Lord will send a delusion. Judgment begins in the house of God. It will not begin on Freemasons. It will not begin on false religions. It will not begin on, on corrupt businessmen on Wall Street or corrupt politicians in Washington. It begins in the house of God. Judgment will come on the church before it comes on this nation. And it's coming on this nation.